In this video, we're going to take a look at creating our roughness map, which is one of the most important maps that we can create. The roughness map is going to describe the microsurface here of our material, and it's going to help us to really control the scattering of the light as the rays hit the wood material surface. So what we want to do here is uh, start with some of the data that we've already been working with. Now, throughout this series, I've talked about the importance of working from grayscale and building all the way up to where we get a very detailed height. And then from there, we can go in and start to create uh, or extrapolate maps like we've been doing, such as our normal here and our aim and occlusion. So now that we have this data, I'm going to use this, uh, you know, all of this intricate detail we've been building, I'm going to use this as a building block to creating my roughness map. So what I like to do is start with something like, say, my ambient occlusion. I'll hit the space bar, and I'm going to do a search for invert. I'm going to choose this invert grayscale node. And then we'll take our ambient occlusion, just plug this here into the invert grayscale. And now already we start to get the data kind of shuffled into, into the areas uh, that we want for our roughness. For example, you can see here that in all of the kind of cavity areas here, like the cracks of the wood and so on, we start to get these white values, which are going to denote a more rough area. And then areas that are black, these are going to be, I guess, more of the kind of rounded or extruded parts here of the wood where where we might expect these values to be more smooth, uh, we have these black values. So like I said, the data is kind of already being placed in the right areas for us, but now we need to reprocess these ranges because right off the bat, this is just going to give us too much of a contrast here for what I want to do uh, with this wood material. So one of the things that I like to kind of do with this, instead of just using a levels, what I'll do is I'll just use this uh, histogram range node. So we'll uh, add the histogram range and we'll just plug this here into the input. And then already you can see that we start to kind of redistribute our value ranges. And this gives me more control over how I want to, like I said, redistribute these values. So we have a range control here, which you can see I can start to adjust my range. I uh, also have this position value. So maybe what I'm going to do is uh, start with something that looks uh, kind of more like this. So this is going to give me uh, kind of the basis here of my roughness. So now let's go back over here to our base material. Um, and I'm going to come over to the instance parameters, scroll all the way down to where I have my roughness. And I'm going to enable my roughness input. And here I'll take the connection out of my histogram range and just plug this into the roughness. So now here in my 3D view, we can start to see uh, how this uh, roughness map is going to be affecting my specular highlights. And with this histogram, now I just have these two controllers here, these two sliders, I can start to make adjustments to these to start to kind of, uh, you know, really finesse this uh, roughness to be, you know, kind of in the range that I want it to. So I'm just going to kind of start to drop this position value a bit, uh, holding down shift control and the right mouse button, just moving my light around so I can just, again, get an idea of how this roughness map is going to, you know, kind of help break up this light. And so, uh, you know, again, just kind of playing around. I'll just drop this value maybe a little bit more. Now here you can see again in this kind of raised area, if we just look at this plank here, you can see it's a little darker. So now we start to, you know, start to see more of a kind of a gloss or a specular hit to that. And uh, that's kind of what I want to work with here. Uh, again, this will be an area where we just come back and forth to this and kind of tweak this a lot. So maybe I'll try something like this to start. All right, so um, here we have the basis of what we want to work with. Again, um, one of the other themes uh, throughout this series has been, you know, when it comes to creating procedural materials, variation is always key. So we want to just now start to take a look at this map here and vary this even more. So now I'm just going to look over here at some of these grunge maps I have, and uh, I'm just going to experiment with uh, possibly adding a grunge map on top of this. So uh, let me just play around with, uh, maybe we'll use this grunge map 13. Um, I don't know, maybe maybe try this grunge map 15 here. So I'm just going to drag and drop this guy here into my graph. And let's take a look at what we have here. Uh, this is a substance as well, so we have a lot of control. So let's just kind of play around with some of these controls here. Maybe drop our contrast down. You can also play around with the inverts and so on. Um, let's just try something like this. So now what we'll do is we'll take a blend and here we'll just place this, place this into the foreground. Let's take the result of our histogram range into the background. And um, instead of the blending mode, let me just play around with just dropping the opacity. So here I'm going to do something just like this. 
So now, again, you can see that, well, we have, you know, what we, you know, the basis of what our roughness map is going to be. But remember, the roughness map describes this microsurface. So the more intricate details that you can place into this map, the more realistic your surface is going to look. All right, so maybe we'll try something like this. Uh, also, uh, let me just play around with maybe using a couple of these blend modes. Um, let's see here. Maybe like an add sub. All right, maybe I'll just try something like this for now. All right, so here, let's go back here to our uh, histogram range. And again, I'm just going to play around with some of these values and see what I can get. So maybe we'll try something like this. Okay, so now we've just kind of built this guy up, uh, processed from our ambient occlusion, inverted histogram range to get it kind of our base. Now we're adding a grunge map over top of this. So now that we kind of have uh, these nodes in place, building up our roughness map, what I like to do after this is add another histogram range. So this is going to become like a controller for my overall roughness. So just as before we make the connection, you can see that uh, because the range is set to 0.5, it automatically kind of changes uh, the value that I had set in the blend operation. So what I want to do to start with this final histogram range node is set the range all the way to 1. So this gives me like this, well, 1 to 1 effect here. And now my position slider is going to be used as an overall kind of global control for roughness. So for example... If I take this position slider now and I start to, you know, kind of dial it up closer to one, you can see that I'm getting an overall more rough effect. And my grunge map is still helping to kind of modulate this effect as well. So now I can use this position as a global roughness slider. And you can see as I get closer here towards zero, we get more of a dark value. And this is going to end up equating to more of a smoother type surface. So enough talk with that let's actually see how it looks in the 3d view so we've already added our roughness here to our base material now let's take our histogram range and plug this into our roughness so now here's our new varied result and again i'm just going to kind of move my light around a bit and you'll see now if i come back to my histogram range here let's drop this value down pretty low now we can see that uh, in case we wanted to have this wood represent, uh, maybe it's in an environment that was wet, it got rained on or something like that. We've got this nice little position slider that we can use to kind of um, you know, make this surface uh, more smooth, but yet still varied here based on our grunge and everything. Again, if we need to make it more rough, we can do that here, but just by dialing the value up with this single uh, slider. So what I think I might do with this guy here is maybe try to set it closer to... Um, I don't know, let's try something like maybe this here. Uh, just play around with it. Let's do this. So we'll try around, you know, point, uh, well, here, let's just do point four just to get a nice kind of uh, round value there. All right, so here's our position. And uh, now what I'm going to do is actually expose this. So uh, let's click the function graph button and choose expose. And for the input name, I'm going to choose new, and I'm going to make a new name for this. So we'll call this roughness underscore amount. And we'll click OK, and then OK one more time to save that name. Here I'll double click uh, in an empty area of the graph to get to kind of my root level of the overall graph. And you'll see here that I have my input uh, parameters and I have position here. So let's click this drop down, and you can see, well, the position name is coming from the label, but my identifier is set to that roughness amount. So here what we're going to do is just call this roughness amount. This is our kind of friendly label. All right, so now we have uh, our slider here, which is going to, uh, by default, from what's set up here, is the minimum value is going to be a zero and the maximum value is going to be one. If we wanted to clamp this, we could, like, for instance, we could say, like, well, we don't want to go below 0.25 and we don't want to go above, like, say, 0.8. We could do this and the clamp is enabled it true and so on. So now we have uh, a nice roughness slider. If we want to preview this, I'll just come over here to this little page button and switch this to preview mode. And now this is what my little roughness slider looks like. And we have this, uh, this new control that allow us to kind of globally change our roughness. However, it's still being modulated based on, again, our ambient occlusion is what we started with, which is being derived from all of that kind of detailed height information we've been working on. We inverted it to make sure that the rough areas were being placed in kind of the cavities, and then we processed that range with a histogram scan. Then again, another important aspect here is that we need to add more variation on top of this. So we used a grunge map and blended that back over, 
And then the last step of this is to use this histogram range node uh, just so that we could uh, expose this single position slider that, again, gives us kind of this nice global control for our roughness. And that's how we take care of the roughness for this particular wood material.